What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm down at Foreign Car Charlotte getting to check out a replica 1965 Ford Cobra. Huge shout out to them for providing this classic car for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. They have a huge selection of inventory. But this model here was built by Superformance in 2007. It's finished off in Guardsman Blue and has an MSRP right around $70,000. Let's go ahead and jump into today's review by starting up underneath the hood where you'll find the Roush Racing 392 small block V8 engine paired to the five speed manual transmission. This engine pumps out 525 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. All of that power is sent to the rear wheels. This has a dry weight around 2,500 pounds, meaning zero to 60 could happen in the high four second range up to its top speed of 134 miles an hour. This car was also known for being able to go from zero to 100 back to zero in 14 and a half seconds, and it has a fuel capacity of 17 gallons. This has a wheelbase of 90 inches. Its overall length is 152. It has a width of 69 inches and a height of 48 inches. With all those specs out of the way, we can go ahead and take a look at the exterior on the Ford Cobra. One thing that I want to start off with is the fact that this is a fiberglass body. So it's very cool how everything is integrated together. There's no front bumper that you can remove. It's all a part of one. So it's very cool how they've been able to take one sheet and form it into the Cobra design. It also makes it very lightweight, which is why it has a low curb weight. But what I really love is these arches above the tires. You can see that matches well with the headlights being placed right at the end of it here. And we have the fender arches that stick out as well, giving it a very aggressive look. Right in the center here, you'll see what would be a grill, a giant opening to provide maximum cooling to that small block V8. So this vehicle was all about getting maximum airflow. You'll also notice that with the hood scoop as well. There's no mesh, air can go right through there to the engine and cool it when needed. You'll also notice the headlights and the turn signals are in separate housings. This was something common for a 65. There is a little bit of mesh, however, on the inside there. And then my favorite feature is these quick jack systems in the front section of the bumper. So you could use these to quickly raise up the front of the vehicle. If you're at the track or something and you needed to change out tires, you could use a mechanism that was placed up underneath that and could quickly lift it up. And then last up, my favorite feature, of course, white stripes running down the hood. Making our way to the side profile now, you'll see this has a really nice set of Halley brand wheels. They measure 15 by eight inches up front and 15 by 10 inches in the rear. You'll also notice the end caps of the wheels have been wired to the wheel itself. This was a really cool invention back in the day from keeping that end piece from spinning off the wheel when you were at speed. So taking your Ford Cobra to the track or you were drag racing it, this was a safety feature that was implemented and that's very cool to see. You'll also notice this has disc brakes all around with four pistons up front and single pistons in the rear. And then just behind the front tire, you'll see the 427 Cobra badge along with some heat extraction vents. And then my favorite part is these fender arches. As I mentioned earlier, everything has been sculpted from one piece. So it's really cool to see how aggressive these are and you can really appreciate what it took to design these out of one piece. And then my second favorite feature is the side exit exhaust. You'll see this on the passenger side. It's also on the driver's side and it also sounds really good. And then last up, you can see there's no door handles on the doors themselves. I'll show how to get into that later, but that just gives it a very seamless design from the side. You'll also notice on the rear passenger fender arch is the fuel cap as well. And finishing up in the rear, you'll see the white stripes continue all the way down to the lower section of the bumper, just to give it a clean look from the rear. We have the taillights and turn signals on both sides, along with that same quick jack system that you saw up front. So these are mounted to the back to quickly lift up the rear. So you could do the front and the rear at the same time, quickly change a set of tires, which is very cool to see. Now it's time to go ahead and take a look at the interior on the Ford Cobra. So I mentioned earlier, there are no door handles. What you had to do was pull on this leather strap on the inside of the door and you could go ahead and open this up where you'll see that is the only thing on the door panel. We have that leather strap. There's no windows for this vehicle, so we don't have that regulator and there's no power locks either. So we have a simple door panel here. This was a driver's car. All you needed was all the important information in the gauge cluster. And then you'll see on the interior, this has a really nice set of black leather seats, really nice design running down them. Over on the driver's side, we also have the stainless steel rollover bar. So that's a unique touch to see just having it on the driver's side. If we go ahead and move on to the steering wheel now, you'll see it's covered in leather. We have the Cobra badge right in the center. And then over on the left side of the steering wheel, you have the air control along with the ignition and all of the vital information you need running throughout the center with the miles per hour right in the middle, 
you have your tack along with engine temperature, some other vitals that you can look at. There's also the heater along with where you'd like the air to go, fan speed, and you also have your wipers and a panel button as well. And a few switches above that to control your horn and your radiator fan. There's also a little bit of storage space on the passenger side there. And as I mentioned, this is the five speed manual. So this is going to be very fun to drive. We have the parking brake over on the passenger side. And then we can go ahead and take one last look at these seats with the racing seat belts, which is also a nice touch. And then right in the middle, there is a little bit of storage space right in the center console. And last up, we'll go ahead and take a look at the rear trunk storage space. In order to do that, all you had to do was twist on this lever here and you could raise this up. It would actually lock into place so you could let go and put in any items that you have. You can see that the roof is actually in the trunk here as well. I've been told this is very cumbersome. It takes a good bit of time. So a lot of owners usually drove with the roof off, but there are spots running across the bodywork in order to put the roof on if you so desire. And then you'll also notice there is a good amount of trunk storage space. We have the battery located over on the driver's side, but you could put in a couple bags here if you needed to. And then to go ahead and close this, all you gotta do is lift it up. It would release on that latch there, and then we can lock it back into place. Let's do it if we can. All right. That'll add to the experience of being in the Cobra. Right on. All right, so one thing about this Ford Cobra is the fact that the pedals are actually off center. So they're farther that way than I am. And uh, the clutch pedal is pretty heavy and the shifter is in a very unique spot. So this might take me a little bit of time. Big motor, big transmission. Yeah, and rear wheel drive. <laughs> and, and no traction control. And tro no traction control. No ABS. So this is gonna be a lot of fun for sure. And uh, unfortunately, it's a really nice day out. So you yes. can at least drive this without the top. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me. This blast. is a lot of fun, and we're only doing 20 miles an hour so far, <laughs> as we get a honk and a wave there. It happens a lot in these cars. This is so cool. Yeah, the, the pedal box is very thin, which you can tap the gas and the brake almost at the same time. Where you 
pop in. Absolutely. Turn just on. like 911. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I just thought of that too. When they would run across the track for the boss car. Yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar with all that, but enough to know a little bit about it. For sure. It rides like a 60 sports car on this road. Yeah, this is a pretty bumpy road. Hopefully you guys can hear us. The audio should be okay. Um, but yeah, I guess this is what you would expect in a vehicle like this. Not yep. to say it's good or bad, but it, it drives really well. Right. I don't have any complaints with it. That stiffness almost adds more to that go-kart-like experience of, of getting this out on the road. It is like a go-kart. Yeah. With <laughs> 500 and some odd horsemen. <laughs> That's impressive. And I'm sure you guys can hear the exhaust. It sounds amazing. Downshifted a little bit. <laughs> Nothing like a V8. Exactly. Sounds incredible. Now, when you put the roof on, is it strictly It's strictly just a soft top, right? It's just a soft top. They do make hard tops for them. Okay. Uh, the soft top, though, you have to assemble the frame. Okay. And then you stretch the vinyl over it. Gotcha. So that, that would take a bit of time. You don't want to get caught in Yeah. Shower. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do one last acceleration onto the highway and see what that's like. You may not be able to hear us, but you should be able to see uh, how much fun this is. But here we go, 500 horsepower.